Now, a new report says all UK children should be given a digital vaccination to equip them with access to technology and skills for the online world. It says that upskilling young people will help to close the digital divide and ensure that they're not susceptible to misinformation. So let's find a little bit more. I'm joined now by Dr Ryan Bramley, who's the co-author of the report and a senior fellow at the University of Sheffield's School of Education. A very good morning to you. Thanks so much for talking to us. So give us, first of all, a, an idea of the scale of this issue, just how many children don't have digital access, access to technology? Good morning. Thank you for having me on. Um, yeah, so the statistics are quite staggering. And, and with the news today about the um, energy cap rising and the average cost of household bills going up, that number is likely to rise even further. So we know that one million people have recently cut back or cancelled their internet packages uh, due to financial constraints. And as I say, we're worried that that, is, uh, that number is only going to rise as uh, the cost of living crisis continues. And you say it's worrying. Give us an idea of what it means for children's progress if it's not addressed and, and how long that uh, impact is felt. Absolutely. Um, so we've got projections at the moment that around 5 million workers will be underskilled in basic digital capabilities by 2030. And currently 75% of the UK's young people feel they lack the necessary digital skills to thrive. Um, so with things increasingly moving online these days, and obviously we saw it during the COVID-19 pandemic with teaching moving online as well, um, access to the internet is becoming increasingly important. And unfortunately, during the pandemic, one in, f uh, one in five children in the UK did not have access to the internet at home. Well, yeah, and, and clearly technology important then in children not feeling or being left behind. But what about education in using uh, that technology and the skills that, that are needed there? There are a lot of risks attached to being online, aren't there? Yeah, absolutely. And a great example of that recently, of, of course, was, was the riots. And, and they've really proven that we do need to ensure that children are learning about this information and other potential harms from an early age. Uh, things like being able to detect a fake news story from a real news story, um, but also, you know, getting those other digital skills and literacy uh, that will hopefully help them in a world of disinformation, fake news and other online harms. And you talk about a minimum digital living standards framework. So what would that look like? Uh, so hopefully it would, you know, the, ide the ideal, of course, is that all children and young people in the UK have access to the internet and to digital devices and such. Um, but also I think it's about how we use them as well. Um, so it's ensuring that every home has access to the internet. It could look like uh, potential, you know, subsidised broadband deals. Um, but it's also about promoting the offers that are already out there for people um, in families with low incomes as well. Um, you know, there are discounts available and things like that. So it's about promoting those, but it's also about ensuring that the bare minimum in every household in the UK is that everybody not only has access to reliable broadband and the internet, but also the devices to make the most of it as well. Well, yeah, and obviously we're looking at the benefits for children and, and obviously that should be a real priority. But are there benefits th for the economy too if there are more and more young people connected? Yeah, definitely. Um, current statistics show that digital shortages, uh, digital skill shortages, I should say, are already estimated to cost the UK £65 billion per year. Um, and again, you know, that's another thing that could only increase um, if we do not address this clear digital divide in the UK. OK, well, uh, really interesting to talk to you this morning. Dr Ryan Bramley, uh, thanks so much for your time. We do appreciate it. Thanks for having me on.